Can a copy of one of the most popular Android devices of 2013 go against a growing Chinese manufacturer? It's the HTC One Max versus Oppo's N1. Why do we need big phones in our pockets? Well, I really don't know, but these things are getting ever so popular. And these two actually are very close in terms of specs. Same display size, same pixel count, same pixel density, even the same processor and GPU running on these. But these are two very different approaches and also two different appealing devices. The Oppo N1 is more custom to developer friendly and also people who want to run perhaps CyanogenMod, while the HTC One Max is basically an HTC HTC One Mini pumped up in a 5.9 inch display and a lesser build quality from the HTC One. My name is Mark O'Hanna from PhoneDog.com. Again, it's the HTC One Max versus Oppo N1. Let's start with the specs of these two devices. The HTC One Max, at first glance, looks like the HTC One, but only bigger. But at a closer inspection, you see the plastic band and non-chamfered edges, unlike the ones you have on the HTC One. You also have a removable back cover where you can access a micro SD card slot. These don't sound like bad things, but the build quality has definitely changed from the HTC One. It's more of an HTC One Mini build than the original HTC One. Underneath you have the same hardware you have in the HTC One, a 1.7 GHz quad-core processor, 2 GB of RAM, and the Adreno 320 graphics card, and the same 4 ultra-pixel camera on the back. Not a huge departure from the HTC One. It's running Android 4.3 with Sense 5.5, running on top with HTC Blink Feed and all the other weird funky names they have for HTC Sense features. The Oppo N1 is a different beast altogether. However, if you look at the specs side by side, these two phones are absolutely identical when it comes to processor, graphics cards, and even the RAM. The same 1.7 GHz quad-core processor, the same 2 GB of RAM, and Adreno 320 graphics card. The difference comes in the form of build quality and exterior features. For example, the Oppo N1 does not have a micro SD card slot. This might be frustrating for someone who wants to expand memory, a request the original HTC One lacked. Here you have to suffice with either 16 or 32 gigabytes of built-in storage. But for that, you do gain one of the best constructions of any mobile phone around. Maybe I need to rephrase that. This thing is a tank an absolute tank. It weighs much more than the HTC One Max because it's one solid unibody construction. Some people are fooled by the white coating on the phone, but it's one chunk of aluminum. With that build quality, it makes the HTC One Max feel cheap and unworthy. As I said in the beginning, these two phones are almost spec for spec, including the displays. These two measure in at 5.9 inches with full 1080p full HD resolutions and 373 pixels per inch reside in both LCD IPS panels. I really couldn't decide which one looked better. Really, they both looked exactly the same. Even the viewing angles are exactly the same. I suppose the bezel is a little bit less on the HTC One Max, which makes it a tiny bit smaller. Yet again, the One Max is thicker than the Oppo N1. Also, while the speakers on the Oppo N1 are pretty loud, they are nothing compared to the front-facing dual speakers on the HTC One Max. They aren't the boom sound speakers on the original HTC One, though. Other features that push the Oppo N1 in other directions is the swivel camera. It's a massive 13 megapixel camera that takes decent photos and a decent video. It's not world class or anything, but using that big camera as a front facing camera makes video calling and front facing video chats the best experience ever. The HTC One Max has a glorified ultra pixel camera. It's four ultra pixels, which means pixels are bigger, which allow more light to pass through, and also with less megapixels, it means less noise and low light. While they do hold true, HTC got rid of OIS, Optical Image Stabilization. This is unbelievable. An HTC One Max, not HTC One Minus something, this is supposed to deliver the same experience on a larger platform. OIS is a hot topic in the mobile phone industry, and so many are getting so good at it. Look at the iPhone. Look at the Lumia 1020 with its achievement of having an active lens system. Right, enough of my rant. Let's talk experience. For this purpose, I've changed the Oppo N1 from CyanogenMod back to ColorOS to give it a stock versus stock appeal. Oppo N1 runs Android 4.2.2, running what Oppo calls their ColorOS skin. 
For the most part, all the Android functions from stock Android are still there. One of Color's downfall is the custom themes that you can choose. They are all kind of corny, but I guess they do work for some people. The feel is just kind of a goofier Android, much like TouchWiz. Also, I don't dig the application icons. It kind of has the same feeling that iOS 7 does, but instead of this wearing off after a couple weeks, I still get the goofiness from the icons. I do like the menu experience of the Oppo N1. It just overlays the home screens, which is a nice departure from the solid black menu found on other Android devices. They've also changed how the notification panel looks from the normal Android, a little bit of their design, and also added more functionality to the notification bars for options like GPS, NFC, Hotspot, 3G, and others. Notice how I didn't say 4G. Why? Because it doesn't have it. 3G only. That sucks. Color is really widget-based through all the home screens. Unlike HTC's Blink Feed feature, Color tries to keep you interested on it and its camera. Like this camera widget that lets you take photos right from the home screen. It's pretty neat. One last feature of Color OS is this gesture drawing board. If you pull down the notification menu from the left side, you'll find a gesture menu. You can program your own shapes to launch specific applications. The HTC One, on the other hand, is running Android 4.3 with Sense 5.5. The real HTC Sense software is this Blink Feed application, which lets you go through different topics that you can select from your social networks or even media outlets. I'm a huge fan of Android's apps which are multitasking, not so much of HTC's though. It's weird and as far as I know there's no end all button, and that's annoying. Now running a benchmark on these two phones, you see the result. The HTC One Max is much faster. How can it be though? Same hardware, right? HTC has had more time perfecting their software other than Oppo and Color. That's just the speed difference. Real world, however, and the difference is barely noticeable. Applications like Chrome and Temple Run open in very similar times on both devices. Real world usability, these two are nearly identical. So even with the software optimization on HTC's end, they don't give that much better results. Two special features on both of these devices are touch points on the back end. The HTC one Max tries to be something more sensible by adding a fingerprint reader on the back, right underneath the camera. So half the time you'll be wiping your oils and food leftovers all over the camera lens, and half the time on a fingerprint reader that doesn't work too well. I mean, at all. You have to press it there for about three to four seconds. It doesn't work half the time, and it's really not in a very good optimal position since it's a big phone. On the N1 side, you have something called O-Touch. Placed further down on the phone, it's a touch-sensitive pad that allows you to navigate through your menus and even activate the camera shutter while you're on the camera application. It works more of the time, but again, it's not perfect. I can live without these two. Now, last but not least, we can move to the cameras. I think I'll make this as a habit. Maybe not the best for last, but a very important feature we should cover at the end. Between the Oppo's 13 megapixel swivel camera and the HTC's 4 ultra pixel camera, and the results are... Well, they're pretty hopeless for both these devices. They do have their pros and cons. Uh, let's start with the HTC One Max. First of all, the colors are actually really good. They're pretty accurate, they're pretty bright, and they do produce some really good colors. Now, the detail, there are a lot of artifacts when it comes to the images, and take a look at the video here, it's really shaky. No optical image stabilization. Again, this will be extremely shaky, especially if you have shakier hands. Uh, I have pretty steady hands, and this is the end result. It's not very good, and it kind of looks bad. Now, notice how it doesn't really like the changes of light and dark. That's not very good dynamic range. Of course, it's only a cell phone camera, so it's not like a DSLR or anything, but it does have this really weird changing effect between bright and dark. The Oppo N1, on the other hand, has a more flat image, but a flat does not mean detail or crispness. There's no sharp looking photo angle. All the images here kind of seem out of focus and I've tried my hardest trying to get these photos in focus. Yet again, they don't look very good. Now the image itself is pretty washed out. That kind of means it's flat. You're not gonna take this photo and post and make it look better. Now you can do that, but the quality and the bit rate isn't there so it'll just fall apart in the end. These two phones don't have the best cameras. I don't think they're really meant to be world class beating like the iPhone 5S or the Lumia 10 20. Yet again, I am very disappointed in both of these devices for having subpar image quality even compared to the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. So to come to a conclusion, the clear winner is the HTC One Max. Why? It's simple. 
4G LTE. The Oppo N1 has no excuse not having a 4G LTE radio. Now, if you live abroad, 4G LTE may not be very existent where you live, but here in the United States, we have 4G LTE basically anywhere near a major city. Even smaller cities have a lot of 4G LTE coverage. So I really do draw the line. It needs to have 4G LTE. I don't care what you say, it does need to have it. Now the HTC One Max has Sense 5.5. Now I don't like any custom Android skin. I much prefer stock Android, like a Google Nexus experience, and I would really like to see the HTC One Max come in a Google Nexus experience. Now there is the HTC One Google Nexus that's currently available, but not the Max. So again, the HTC One Max is the clear winner. The Oppo N1, if you do want the developer options and CyanogenMod, Mod, then the Oppo N1 is a great choice, as long as you don't care about having 4G LTE. Well, my name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Marco. And I'll see you guys in the next video.